Hello and welcome to my Hack These Knack number demo. Uh, I'm just going to go through the numbers and basically explain why they're shaped the way they are and how this system works. This is a base 60 system. Uh, so this is zero. Looks just like regular zero basically. Uh, same with one. But then two is a little bit different. Uh, the idea is that there's you know two of these curly bits uh, and that's two. This is the base form of two, right? Um, Similar idea with three. Three has you know three of these curly bits. Um, four is an exponentiated two, so it's the two curly bits and then power, right? That's like a shorthand for four because it's two times two. Uh, five, five curly bits, pretty self-explanatory. Six, six curly bits. Um, you know, but obviously there's a point where that breaks down. So uh, seven, which is a prime number and it can't be symmetrically divided or well not symmetrically divided into uh, something like this um, oh, seven is its own symbol which kind of looks like a Z this is the base symbol for numbers that have multiples of seven or are multiples of seven um, here's eight so it's two powers of two two to the third and here's nine and it's a lot like three and a lot like six Except that it's uh, it's got nine of these curly bits, and uh, this the circle in the center is to visually distinguish it from three. Which so when you're reading fast, you can tell that it's not three; it's nine. Uh, here's ten, and this is the base symbol for multiples of ten, the line through the zero. Which I think for people who come from you know the normal base ten system, that's a an easy connection to make. Uh, here's eleven, so. There, this is a bit abstract, but there's 11 sort of points coming off of it. Um, and so that's the base symbol for 11 multiples. Uh, here's, oop, here's 12. So it's um, the symbol for 6 mixed with the symbol for 2 because 2 times 6 is 12. Here's 13. It gets its own base symbol because it's a prime number. Here's 14. It's two curls or that is to say to, to indicate that it's 2 times 7. Here's 15, which has three curls at the end of each tip for the 5, so that's 3 times 5. Here's 16, which is three exponentiations on 2, so that's 2 to the 4th. And here's 17, which is a lot like 7, except it's a double stack Z. And since it's prime, it also gets its own base symbol. Here's 18, which is 6 mixed with 3. So I think you probably see the pattern by now. Um, effectively, the goal of this system is to give primes their own symbols and then give multiplicated or numbers that are constructed for multiplication uh, sort of like the, uh, the child of those two symbols, like if they had a kid. So, you know, 6 and 3 is 18. Uh, here's 19. It gets its own symbol. Uh, you know, it's basically arbitrary. This is how 19 feels to me. Uh, here's 20, so two curls on the symbol for 10, you know, the zero with the line through it. Here's 21, so three curls on seven, three times seven. Here's 22, which is a lot like 11, except it's bred with two, effectively. So this is the, the child of 11 and two, 22. Here's 23, gets its own symbol. Um, again, arbitrary, kind of. For, there's there's not really a good way to organize 23 objects in a nice readable format that works at any font size. So I just picked a, a recognizable symbol. It's kind of like a raindrop. Here's 24, which is two twos times six. And six, if you look at it, it's actually two groups of three because six is a not prime. So it's actually constructed from two bred with three in the first place. But 24 is six bred with two and two. So that's uh, 2 times 2 times 6 is 25. Similar thing with 9. See how the circle in the middle visually distinguishes it from 5? Uh, just like 9 is 3 squared, this is 5 squared. So the circle kind of indicates it's like a, a square number, but that's not uh, used in every case. It's just uh, for visual distinguishment. It's 26. That's 2 bred with 13. And Here's 27, which is 9 with another layer. So you see the dot in the middle of the 9, you know it's 27 because it's 3 times 3 times 3. Here's 28, so we've got 2 times 7 
times two. So this is this is effectively the shape of the two mixed into 14. So it's 14 times two or seven times two times two. Here's 29, it gets its own symbol. Uh, I picked this because it's got something you can accent here and something you can accent here for larger numbers. Here's 30, that's uh, three instead of two like on the 20, although this kind of looks like it would be 60, but it's 30. Here's 31, arbitrary symbol. Um, and since 31 is the first prime number that doesn't have a multiple less than 60, um, it, it, this is the only instance of the 31 symbol, but it's, it's 31. Here's 32, so you can see the powers of two stacking up and just the two symbol with the powers. Here's 33, we got a, a sort of three inside of the 11. So three times 11. Here's 34, which uh, 17 symbol and the accentation that makes it two times 17. Uh, here's 35. Now, 35, this symbol is very strange. Um, it's got a sort of Z-ish thing going on here, like the seven, but it also has a sort of, it, it doesn't really invoke five per se, but the idea is that this one right here is actually also a Z and it's in the three dimensional plane. So you can't see the whole thing. It'd be like extending into the background. So the idea is actually there's five, seven symbols here, but one of them sideways. So that's just a way to remember it, but this is 35. Here's 36, which is six by six. So 36. Here's 37, it gets its own symbol because it's prime. Kind of looks like a key. I really like 37, it's a nice number. I like the symbol as well. Uh, here's 38, that's two times 19. And uh, here's 39, which is uh, three thirteens, right? So um, the 13 has had its club sort of multiply. This is 39. Here's 40. The, uh, the little square in the middle is supposed to indicate four. It's like four tens. Here's 41. It gets its own symbol. I think this is a nice symbol for 41. Um, kind of like a four and a one, but it's also kind of like a playing card because it's rotationally symmetrical. Oh, it's worth noting is almost all of these are rotationally symmetrical. Um, unlike in uh, normal base 10 math, like this, if you flipped it upside down, this is 42, it's six by seven, and that's uh, 42. But if you flipped it upside down, it'd be the same symbol. So the idea is that um, unlike six and nine, which are you know mirror images of each other, there are only one instance of any given symbol. And if you flip it upside down, it's usually gonna be the same one. Here's 43, it gets its own arbitrary symbol, um, prime, you know, Here's 44, we got that same square thing like with 40, but inside of an 11. Uh, we got 45, which this triangle uh, is to indicate a, a three-ness with the three out here as well. So three times five times three is 45. Here's 46, which is two times 23. Here's 47, it gets its own symbol. It's kind of like the inverted version of 31. Here's 48, which is um, this four shape uh, and the six shape. It, it would maybe, you might think it's 24, but 24 has two lines. Um, so this is 48. Um, it would just be a little bit cluttered if there were four twos go going across a six. So I used a, a, a sort of square. Uh, here's 49. This is just like the power of two. So this is seven squared. Uh, 7 times 7 is 49. Here's 50. So uh, this is the like the circle from the 10. Uh, and then uh, 2 times 5, right? So um, like 10 times... Actually, that's not quite right. Uh, 10 times 2 times 5 would be 100. But uh, this is the symbol for 50. It might be a less well-justified symbol than the others. I think 55 is less well-justified as well. Here's 51. That's 3 times 17. You can see the 3 and the 17. And here's 52, which is two 13s times two, right? So that's uh, 26 times two, that's 52. Here's 53, it gets its own symbol because it's prime. It's a little bit like 19, but visually distinct because of the sort of orb. Here's 54, so <laughs> this one might need some deconstruction. 
Um, this is like nine times six. So we've got a sort of nine-ish shape, but to be visually distinct from the nine, it doesn't have all three curls out here. And then these are supposed to indicate six. So it's like um, nine times six is 54. Here's 55. Um, this, you know, it just has to be able to, this, since it's like the combination of 11 and five, I didn't really have a good way to mix the 11 symbol with the five symbol. It would just be really visually complicated. So here's something that just kind of sticks out on its own. So that's 55. Uh, here's 56. This one's honestly just like a beautiful number. It reminds me of like a, like a, a like a calligraphy or something, but it's two times two times two times seven, which is 56. Uh, that's yeah. Two times seven is 14 times two is 28 times two is 56. So there's a symbol for 56. Here's the symbol for 57, which is three on 19. And here's 58, which like I was saying with the 29, this is 29 accented to be times two. And here's 59, which is prime. So it gets its own symbol, which is a lot like 58, but uh, you wouldn't mistake them for each other. And then when you go to the next digit up, well, let's say if you go to 60, it would be one zero because it's base 60. So that's just, uh, that's just the hack of these knack system. And, uh, it's, you know, it's kind of nice to do math in base 60 because, um, 60 is a highly composite number. And unlike 10, many of the decimals that you would work with, like, one third, it terminates in base 60, it's 0.20, uh, that's 20 sixtieths, whereas in base 10, it's, you know, a repeating number. And, uh, you know, for children especially, I think this would be an easy system to learn if you learned it first, because um, the, the symbols are like inherently consistent. You know, you, you see this, you're like, oh, that's gotta be made of 13. Like, you're never gonna forget 39 is three times 13 when it's built into the symbol. Um, and then there's other nice things as well, such that, um, say something, you know, if it ends in 41, uh, you know that it's not divisible by, like if the last digit is 41, you know, it's not divisible by any of the factors of 60 because say you have 101, right? Um, that'd be 141 and 41 in that case means that, um, it's not going to be divisible by three or two or five or seven or anything like that. So you get a sort of indication of numbers of whether or not they're prime just by looking at their last digit. Um, and that's not always true, but it's a, a relatively consistent thing you can use because 60 is highly composite. So yeah, um, that's my Hackety's Knack demo and thank you for watching.